welcome. This is our Passport Adventure Program, and we are about to explore the wonderful country of Uganda. So I'm going to walk you through a few housekeeping things because below you will see a link. If you click on that link, you will have access to all of the materials that we need for our program. I'm going to show them to you right now and then you can pause this video and print them for yourself. The first thing is our passport. We're going to Uganda, so everybody needs their very own passport right here. I printed mine on white paper, but you can choose to use any color you like. It is two-sided, and you will see an area where we're able to put our stamps. Our stamps are on this page. So we have the continent of Africa with Uganda right there, and these are our four stamps that we are going to be using through our program. Next items that are in our packet is a wonderful extension guide. This is our Passport to Adventure Uganda activity packet that Ms. Jamie put together. And inside are some wonderful activities that you can do after our program. There's questions to answer, and believe it or not, some of the things that we're going to be talking about today, you'll be able to answer right away. Also in your packet, you will find instructions on how to make a very traditional game called Mancala. Now maybe some of you have actually played this game. It is originated in Asia and in Africa, and it's been around for 7,000 years. I'm going to show you how to make your own Mancala game out of an egg carton and about 48 items of something, whether they're beans or stones or beads or anything in your house. They'll have items from your house that we're able to make that together. And then finally, Miss Jamie is going to take us into her kitchen and she is going to demonstrate how to make something absolutely delicious that people from Uganda make quite frequently. And it'll be with items that you have in your very own home. Those recipes are also in the link. So. Let's get started. Got to put my hat on because we're going on an adventure. So here we go to Uganda. We are using this wonderful resource called This Is How We Do It by Matt Lamoth. He is not only the author but the illustrator to this book where he talked to and interviewed seven children from around the world. And today, we are going to meet one of his friends from Uganda. So I have the pictures from the book that we are going to be focusing on. And this is a story about a seven-year-old girl named Daphne. But I bet you that you have a nickname, don't you? So you may have a name that you were given at birth but your family calls you something else sometimes. Well, Daphne also has a nickname. Her nickname is Abuli, and she is seven years old. Maybe some of you are seven years old. So as we go through this story, you're gonna notice things that are similar that we do and also different. So be thinking about those things. What are some of the items that Abuli does on her average day that you do. What does she eat for breakfast? How does she get dressed for school? Where does she go to school? What sorts of fun things does she like to do? We're gonna be talking about that today. But first, we need to meet Abuli and her family. So this is Abuli. There she is right there in that sweet little pink dress. And she lives with her mom right there and her dad and her brother. Let's see, her mother's name is Beatrice. Her father's name is Peter. And her brother's name is Roger. So there are four in her family in Uganda. 
So where does Abuli live in Uganda? So she lives in a house made of wood and mud in the village of Kanawara. So this is where Abuli lives. She lives in a village in Kanawara in Uganda. And very typical homes are made of mud, keeps the houses cool, and uh, the, the roof itself are from the trees that surround her village. So how is that similar to your house? Do you live a house that is made of stone and wood? I bet you do. So here we go. What does a bully eat for breakfast? What do you eat for breakfast? Hmm, think about some things. Like, I like toast. Hmm, I like to drink milk for breakfast. Let's find out what a bully eats for breakfast. So in Uganda, I have matok, hmm, matok, with meat, bread, eggs, and milk. Are some of those items items that you eat for breakfast? They are. We eat eggs, right? And we eat bread and milk and sometimes meat for breakfast. But what is matok? It's those little yellow cubes. Matok is actually in the banana family. And what they do with matok is they use it, they have the banana that is unripened, so they're green. How many times have you bought bananas from the grocery store that are still green? You can't really eat them because they don't taste good. But with matok, you actually peel the unripened banana and you chop it up and you fry it or you boil it and mash it. It is a very, very common staple that they use in Uganda. A common staple is like potatoes. We eat potatoes a lot or we eat rice a lot. They eat matok a lot. So what does Abuli wear to school? Let's find out. So they actually have a uniform where Abuli goes to school. We all dress in red t-shirts and green shorts for school. So she wears this every day. So if you would look, she has a t-shirt and shorts. So that must mean that it is pretty consistently warm throughout her day. Maybe it might rain, she might have to wear a coat, but this is what she wears to school every day. Maybe you wear a t-shirt to school? Possibly, and shorts, especially when it's warmer, and gym shoes. Mm-hmm. How does a bully get to school? How do you get to school? Maybe some of you are driven to school. Maybe some of you walk to school. Maybe some of you take a bus to school. This is how a bully gets to school. So she walks for about a half hour with friends along the path, and she passes bicyclists and groves of eucalyptus and banana trees. So in order for Bully to get to school, she has to walk a half hour, which is quite a ways, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But at least she gets to walk with friends and talk about what they're going to do for the day. So in Uganda, where she goes to school, it is a private school. Do you see they all have the same t-shirts and the green shorts and the gym shoes? So she says, I study at a private school far from home. So I stay with my grandma who has a home nearby. There are 69 boys and girls in my class and we study math, reading, writing and religion. So she actually goes to school, but she stays in that village all week and then comes home on the weekends. That's quite different from what we do here, hmm? But it looks like she certainly has a wonderful time with all of her classmates. Now, what does a bully like to do for fun? Let's find out. I bet you had something you enjoy to do. What are they doing here? 
They say she likes to jump rope with her friends during school. I bet you you jump rope. It is a fun pastime. It's very good cardio activity. Makes your bones strong and makes your muscles strong. Jump roping is one of her favorite things to do. Maybe it's one of your favorite things to do. So when she goes home on the weekends, let's find out what she does for dinner. And when she eats dinner, wow, this is a surprise. So it says, my brother, mom, housemaid, and I usually eat dinner around 10 o'clock at night. Could you wait till 10 o'clock to eat dinner? Wow, we have matoke. Ooh, we learned about that, didn't we? With G nut sauce and milk to drink. G nut sauce. I found out what G nut sauce is. G nut stands for ground nuts. Ground nuts. So it's nuts that grow on the ground, not in trees, like peanuts. So peanuts are G nuts. They ground them up or grind them up. And then they add usually vegetable stock or chicken stock, some tomato sauce and some spices, and they make a lovely creamy sauce that they pour over different dishes. It is quite tasty, and I think I need to make myself some peanut sauce to pour over some potatoes or maybe sweet potatoes. Mm -mm -mm. So where does a bully sleep? So here she is. She sleeps on a wooden bed under a mosquito net in a room I share with my parents. So she shares a bedroom with her parents and she has her own bed. But what I find interesting is that she sleeps under a mosquito net. So they have mosquitoes like we do. We know what mosquitoes do, don't we? They bite. Mm-hmm. So she sleeps under a mosquito net so she doesn't get bit. That is smart. So now what I need you to do is I need you to cut out two of the stamps. I need you to cut out the Ugandan stamp and I need you to cut out the flag stamp because we're going to use those to put in our um, passport, okay? So we need to put two stamps in our passport, okay? So I have the Ugandan stamp because we literally made it to the country, right? So get your glue stick and put a little bit of glue on the blue stamp and put that in your passport. And since we finished our story about a bully, I would like for you to take the flag. This is the national flag of Uganda. And put some glue on that and put that also in your passport book. Now, if you haven't done so already, there's my stamp, I got two stamps. If you've not done so already, color the outside of your passport and then inside is some very important information that you need to fill out. I, I haven't filled it out either, but we need to have your name, your date of birth, the place of birth, so that would be the United States. Maybe you can put the city you were born in. Ask a grown-up, ask one of your parents. Maybe they would know, I'm sure they do your nationality, what, what is your ethnicity? Where does your family come from? Date of issue, well that could be today's date, and then you have to sign it. All passports must have a signature. And then right here, you need a picture of yourself. So you can do that so many ways. You could take a photo from school, one of your school pictures, or you can draw yourself there whatever you want to do. So up until this point, 
we have filled in two of our stamps for our passport. And so now, what we're going to do... Wait, Ro! What do you have in your mouth there, Ro? You got something in... You got something in the mail? It does say... Look, it says to Ro. Ro, this is from your pen pal in Uganda. And it what? You also had a packet. A packet where? Oh, this? Oh, was this in the mail too? Well, let's read. Let's read. Oh, is this from Uganda? Ro, this is from Zippy. Zippy is one of Ro's pen pals from Uganda. He's a chimpanzee. And, oh, look, there's the Ugandan stamp right there. So I will read this postcard out loud to our friends. Oh, I'm so excited. It says, Hi, Ro. My name is Zippy, and I live in the Budong Forest in Murchison Falls. Murchison Falls National Park in Uganda. Ooh, I wonder. I've got to find a map for that. I am very excited to be your new pen pal. Are you excited too? Oh, it's so exciting. I like to hang out with my family in the treetops much of the time. I have a waterfall in my backyard. Wow. And many friends live nearby. I am sending some pictures of some of them for you to share and a picture of me getting ready to mail your postcard. Please write soon to tell me all about you and where you live. Your friend, Zippy. Well, can we open up the other envelope that you just got, Ro? This envelope right here? Okay, let's open this up. Oh, here's Zippy. You want to hold on to that for me, Ro? Look, there's Zippy right there, and he's holding the exact same postcard. Wow, Ro. So that's Zippy. Oh, he looks so handsome. Let's see, what pictures did he send us in this envelope? Let's, let's, let's do this, okay? Oh, here. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so here's one. So here is actually an outline of the con or the country Uganda. And I think he mentioned the forest. Here, you hold on to that for me. Thank you, Ro. I gotta look at my postcard again. So Zippy lives in the Budong Forest. So the Budong Forest is oh, it's way up here. This is where Zippy is from. Wow. And let's see what else he gave us. Oh, here's a picture. Here's a picture of the waterfall. That's like in his backyard. Can you imagine having a beautiful waterfall like that in your backyard? I love the sound of water and having a waterfall. Oh, that would be fantastic. Wow. And what else do we have here? Oh, here's another picture. Oh, look at this one. Yes, this is the Mutanda Lake in the Virungi Mountains. The Virungi Mountains. Let's look and see where that is. So let's, this is our map, right? And the Virungi Mountains are down here. So this is a series of mountains that is far, far away from where Zippy lives, up in this rainforest. Fantastic. Having a friend like Zippy way, way over in Uganda. Oh, I think we need to write Zippy, don't we, Ro? Mm-hmm. We can tell him all about our adventures here in the United States. Well, now that we read Ro's pen pal Zippy's exciting news about him in Uganda, we have a stamp that we need to put in our passport. And guess which one it is? It's the one with the gorillas. Oh, look, maybe that's Zippy. Who knows? That could be Zippy's mom or dad. So let's put some glue on that. Ro, here's my glue stick. 
and we're going to put some glue on that. There we go. And I'm going to take that off my glue stick. Oh, it's sticky stuff. See? I'm going to put that in my passport. Oh, Ro, you're helping me out. Thank you so much. All right. So now look at, we have three, we have three stamps in our passport. Oh, fantastic. Well, now we have two more things we're going to do. Miss Janie is going to take us to her kitchen because she has something delicious that she is going to make for us. In our Passport to Adventure packet, there are two recipes that we have included and she is going to surprise us with which one we're going to make today. Mm -mm. Miss Janie, I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to make for us from Uganda. Hi Susan, hi Ro, hi boys and girls. I'm very excited to be on this journey with you. Today we are going to make a dessert called mandazi and it's kind of like a fried bread or kind of like a donut that we would eat here in the United States. What you're going to need for this recipe is some sugar, some powdered sugar, some flour. You're going to need a sifter because we need to sift our flour. You're going to need some milk, and it can be coconut milk, regular milk, almond milk, whatever kind you would like. They usually use coconut milk in Uganda. You will need some salt, some cinnamon, some instant yeast, and you will need an egg as well as a bowl, measuring cups, measuring spoons, a rolling pin, and a pizza cutter will be helpful. You'll also need some oil, some vegetable oil, both for the recipe and then or deep frying because we're going to deep fry our dough after it has risen. So we'll need that for both. And we are ready to get started. We're going to start by combining one cup of milk, or a quarter cup of vegetable oil, a quarter cup of sugar, one egg, we're going to put in our instant yeast, and then we're going to put in a half teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of our cinnamon. And then we're going to Put in our flour one cup at a time, and we're going to sift it as we go. It's all in, and then we're going to stir that. The recipe calls for three and a half cups of flour, but I don't know if we'll use it all. Sift in our next cup. We want our dough to come all together so that we can take it out and knead the rest of the flour in. Sure you scrape your sides of your bowl to get all of it in. Put in our third cup. It looks like it's almost ready to knead. A little sticky still. in that last half cup. And it's about ready to take it out of the bowl. Put down my mat. A little flour. 
flower. On my surface so it won't stick. Spread it around. Turn out my dough. And then we're going to knead it. To work the rest of the flour in. You want a slightly elastic dough. You're going to continue to knead your dough until it's no longer sticky. I think we're nearly there. I have some flour in the sifter next to me. So I could sift a little bit and add it if I needed to, which I did. And then after you have a nice elastic dough that you're not sticking to anymore, we're going to put it back into the bowl and cover it and leave it in a warm area to rise for an hour. I think we're good. We're not sticking to anything. I'm just going to put them in here and cover it. And then we will set our timer for an hour and then come back for the next step. After your dough has risen, you're going to just gently push it down a little bit and then knead it. Again, you might need a little bit of flour on your hands. And then we're going to separate it into four balls of dough. Need a little bit more flour. Still a little sticky at the bottom. I'm going to separate it. The dough I'm not going to use yet, I'm just going to stick onto a tray. And I'm going to cover that so it doesn't dry out. I'm ready for it. And then with this one, I'll put my flour down. I'm going to use my rolling pin. And roll it out. About a third inch thick circle. And then at this point, you can either use a pizza cutter to cut it into triangles, or you can use a round cookie cutter if you want circles. I'm going to try this batch with the pizza cutter and a little bit of flour on here. So after you have your triangles, you can just put that to the side. 
and then set them aside and they'll be ready to fry. I'm gonna put another towel over these. And then this one will roll out. And we'll try some circles this time. Now it's time to fry our dough. So for this part, you're going to need um, a pot or a skillet with some vegetable oil in it. And we're gonna heat that up in over a medium heat. When this is heated, we're going to fry our dough. And I have it all ready on a tray to the side here. After it's fried, we're going to wanna to do three to four at a time and one to two minutes on each side. So I have some tongs to turn them. And then after they're fried, we're going to stick them onto a plate with paper towels on it to drain the oil on it. So here we go. We're going to turn on the heat. You will need an adult to help you with this part. After the oil has heated up, we are going to take one of our pieces of dough and stick it in. Place them around. We don't want them to stick to each other. We're going to cook them one to two minutes on each side until they get a nice golden brown color. And see how they puff up? My pan is kind of wider, so I'm going to do maybe five at a time. I do have a lid on the side here in case it gets too hot where it's going to splatter. So I can put that over because hot oil will splatter sometimes, which is why you need an adult to help with this part. Turn it over. We have a little bit of golden brown there. After they are finished cooking in the oil, we're going to just take them out and stick them on a plate with paper towel to kind of drain that oil. And you'll cook all of your dough this way. until you have completed all of them. And that's all there is to it. After you're done frying your mendazi, you can take a little powdered sugar and you can either just sprinkle it on with a little teaspoon or you can put it into your sifter that we used earlier. Make sure there's no flour left in it. And then you can just sift it over top. And then you can try them out. And I hope you like them. Susan, I hope you get a chance to make these because they smell really, really good. I can smell the cinnamon and the dough. It does smell like donuts. So give it a try. And now I'm looking forward to looking and seeing how to make our Mancala game. I have our instructions from our passport packet and I will get my materials and be ready to make that with you. Bye. Well, thank you so much, Miss Jamie. I'm so happy you included the recipe on how to make mandazi for us in our Passport to Adventure packet. I mean, I've got flour and sugar and yeast and coconut milk in my house, and so they look so good. Like, 
a new version of a donut. So I am making myself some tonight. Mm -mm -mm. Well now, before we put our stamp in our passport, we have one more section. I'm going to teach you how to make and play the game Mancala. All you need is an egg carton and uh, a scissors and 48 pieces of something. Um, they could be beads. They could be uh, glass, like little stones. They could be pennies. It doesn't matter. You just need 48 of them. And I'm going to now show you how to make your own Mancala set. This is a game that's been around for over 7,000 years. So here we go. All right, so this is our make and play section of our program. I'm going to teach you how to make your own Mancala set. And these are the items that you need. First, you will need a egg carton. And the egg carton that I have actually has a completely flat top. If you have one like this, that's fantastic. If not, you can use a regular egg carton and I can show you an alternative. You will also need 48 pieces of something. And I have chosen, I have some glassies right here. They don't have to be the same size or same color as long as it's 48 items of something. Uh, that could be penny, that could be dry kidney or lima beans, um, anything beads, just 48 of them. You will also need either tape or glue, either one, and a scissors. So our first step will be to cut our egg carton in half. And egg cartons work perfectly because each side you need six spaces for your beads. And an egg carton works perfectly. So with your scissors, you are going to cut the fold off and you are going to cut the top and the bottom away from each other. So I'm going to do that right now. And then this as well. Mm. All right, this piece you don't need it all, so you can just toss that. So here is what is going to be our Mancala tray. And then this piece we need at the ends of our Mancala game. Because believe it or not, the end piece that goes at the end of your game is called the Mancala. So we are going to cut this in half and it is going to sit right underneath our Ooh, it's a little tricky trying to keep that straight. I'm going to go this way. And so see how this will sit just like that? And on this side as well. So this is where you would glue your pieces. You would glue this side and this side. And so I think actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some tape for time purposes. I think that'll work just as well. All right, so now I'm going to stick that on that side and stick that on that side. Fantastic. All right, so this is our Mancala tray. Now, remember when I said if you didn't have um, an egg carton that had a flat top, something that looks more like more like this, because there's going to be holes in it when you use the top, you can use a container, and you would need two of them, and put them at either side of your Mancala. It'll work exactly the same. So now I'm going to teach you how to play. And you need two people to play the game of Mancala. So this little friend of mine has decided to be my partner in playing the game.
Now you need 48 pieces of something. I have some glassies. Um, we've always called these glassies. They're just little glass beads and it does not matter um, the size or the color. You just need 48 and you want to put them in each of these containers and you want four pieces in each container. Okay, so these are the rules for Mancala. The six pits that face you are your stores. And then this section here, which is called the Mancala, is yours. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and your Mancala. Your opponent has the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six pits, and their Mancala. You always move in a counterclockwise motion. The game begins when you choose who is going to go first. Now, my opponent has graciously lay, allowed me to make the first move. Moving in a counterclockwise motion, you decide which pit you're going to choose from first. And I'm going to choose this one. So taking the pieces out, you would place one piece in each of the spaces including your Mancala if you pass it. When your stones run out, then it is your opponent's next move. Continuing taking turns, if on your move you run into your opponent's Mancala, you have to skip it and place it in the next one. If on your move, you are placing beads and your bead is across from a store, you get to take all of those beads, plus the one here, and put those in your store. If on your turn, you move your beads, one in each container, and the last one goes into your Mancala with no more, then you get to go again. The game ends when one side is completely empty. When that side is completely empty, your opponent will take their pieces out and add them to their mancala. And then you count what amount you have in each side, the highest number wins. Well, guess who won the game? My little fox. The game ended in a 26-22. So he had 26 of the glass beads and I had 22. So apparently he has some skill in this game, Mancala. There are a whole bunch of other different uh, ways to play Mancala, different strategies, and you can actually research that um, on the internet to find out um, how to be a very skilled Mancala player. I just wanted to give you the basics so you can get started right on your way. So we're going to wrap things up now in row. There you are. We have one more stamp to put in our passport. And the last one we have is two kids actually playing the game Mancala. If you can see that right here, I already put it in my passport. Do you see that? There they are playing the game Mancala. So with our section of Miss Jamie uh, teaching us how to make mandazi and me teaching you how to play the mancala, make sure you put that in your passport because now we're finished with our Passport to Adventure program. We had a wonderful time getting to know Abuli. There's Abuli and her family right here from the country of Uganda and walking in the day in the life of what Abuli does. There are some things that are similar and there are some things that are very different, aren't there? We also got a postcard from Rose Passport or his friend Zippy from Uganda. Here's a picture of Zippy. 
there we are with that with that postcard. So Ro, we're going to have to write to Zippy and tell him about all the things that go on in Crystal Lake. Miss Jamie then taught us how to make mandazi and the ingredients practically you can get anywhere at any store. So I am super excited to learn how to make those. And then finally, I just taught you how to play the game Moncala. So you can find a buddy, find a sister, a brother, um, your mom and dad, your aunt and uncle, or your neighbor, and play that game. Because it is something that, uh, like any other game, the more you play, the better you get. You learn strategy, but most importantly, you have fun, right? Now, in your Passport to Adventure packet, there is a whole bunch, oh, there you go, Rowan, a whole bunch more information that you can be doing. There are some excellent questions. Miss Jamie made this um, packet for us, and there are some things that you can actually answer right after we're done with this program. Like some of them, what kinds of foods do people like to eat in Uganda? Well, do you remember what the food was from our story with Abuli and what she eats? Matoke, remember that? And Miss Jamie just demonstrated how we make mandazi. So you can actually answer that question right now. There are several other questions that you can answer, but you can always do more investigating and finish your passport packet so that you are completely done with the program. Well, we are so happy that you joined us today in learning about the beautiful culture and the country of Uganda. So thank you for joining us and hopefully we will have another addition to our Passport Adventure Program, traveling to another country and learning about what that child does on their average day. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.